Our person of interest today is known as Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed Formaggio, the current president of the Republic of Somalia. Very many people in Somalia and out of Somalia believe Mohammed Formaggio is God sent leader to save Somalia. On the other hand, very few people believe that he is a dictator that is hellbent to destroy Somalia. Whichever side of the divide you belong to, you have your own reasons why you have come to the conclusions of these two arguments. Is he God sent leader to save Somalia or is he a dictator hellbent to destroy Somalia? Assalamu alaikum and welcome. If it is your first time you are coming across this platform, please hit subscribe and turn on notification. The question I have to ask is who is Muhammad Abdullahi Muhammad Farmajo? Who is he? He was born in Somalia and he was born in Mogadishu in 1962. He moved to the U.S. in 1985 and started working as a secretary in the Somali embassy in Washington, D.C. between 1985 and 1988. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in history from the University of Buffalo in 1998. Three. While he was in the U.S., he worked for the Buffalo Municipal Housing Authority as a commissioner. He held dual citizenship, Somalia and American, until when he renounced the American citizenship in 2018. When did Formaggio joined politics. He joined politics in 2011 when he was appointed Somali Prime Minister by Sheikh Sharif Sheikh Hassan, the, the, then the president of Somalia. A lot of things happened between when he was appointed Prime Minister and when he resigned from the position of Prime Minister. And there are two striking incidents that have come to light when he was a prime minister. And these two striking incidents, I will mention them. The first one is when he went for a foreign trip and was traveling from Somalia and he was traveling to Nairobi, Kenya. Now, it is him who narrated the story. I will not give a lot of details, but what he said that people liked about his kind of leadership was he used normal passenger planes. Instead of using a chartered plane that is very expensive to hire, it was estimated to cost around 30,000 USD, but he only used $800, him plus three other delegates with him. So that was the first incident that really struck a chord between him and the Somalis. The second incident was where a soldier at one of the airports and intercepted three, uh, 3 million USD that was being taken, ferried to somewhere in Somalia because of pirates or ransom. There, there was something that was requiring the attention of that money. Someone wanted that money to be handed over. So a soldier a security officer in one of the airports decided that he's not going to take money. And that second incident is also striked a chord 
between the administration and the Somali people. This is where now the, the phrase, the saying comes in. People do what people see. People do, if you want to influence people, you do what people see. And if they like what they see or if they don't like what they see, all the same, they do what they see. The, what I mean by this is if the top, where the back stops, if that person is rumored, not even proved, rumored to be taking money, public money, all the junior officers will also do the same. This is where this comes in. President Farmajo is not known to be accumulating personal wealth using public resource. And this has also been said by his opponents, political opponents, people he's competing with. They said, Abdurrahman Abdi Shakur said in one of the interviews that he is not known to be a corrupt person. He does not show that he is a corrupt person. He does not seem to be someone who is accumulating personal wealth. That is point number one, a significant point that people need to note. When he resigned from the Prime, Minute, Prime Minister's position in mid-2012, there was coming election around October and he lost. The main reason why he lost, why many commentators are saying why he lost is because money exchanged hands. People may want to know what are the guiding philosophies, Farmajo's guiding philosophies, what are they? Number one is solutions to Somali problems can only be found amongst the Somalis. If Somalia needs to get out of this mess, the people who are going to do that are Somalis. That is principle number one. That is what Farmajo believes. Principle number two is tribalism and clanism are the cause of the problems in Somalia. So criteria for choosing leadership should not be based on tribalism. Effectiveness and personal leadership qualities, issue-based policies, these are things that people need to consider instead of considering people who come from their clan backyards. I am that clan and the person who is going to represent me is going to be from that clan. That argument is presenting that that is a negative way of moving forward. And the third one is, as I have mentioned earlier, what you do is what people see. It's not what you believe, is people see what you do. You do good things, people do good things. If you do bad things, people do bad things. If you are corrupt, people will be corrupt. Those who work under you will be corrupt. So to avoid to discourage retrogressive corruption mentality, people have to shun away and keep away from corruption. If you are going to be working in public service, that is not a good place where you are going to make personal wealth. You have to do business, going to business, going to other professions that are money-making professions. But if you are going to be in public service, be prepared to serve and serve diligently.
Now, in his four-year rule as the president of Somalia, his guiding principle in terms of foreign relationship is with other governments is respect and cooperation. There is no country that is subordinate to another country. What is required is if there should be cooperation, then there should be respect. He has promised to build a government which deserve the confidence of Somalia, and he has done that precisely within four years. Although there are some pending issues, the Putland issue, the Jubaland issue, the election issue, these are issues that are outstanding. But in my view, if he is given another four years, the country will be on the roadmap to success. What has he achieved? This is a question. This is a question that people are asking. What has he achieved? First, number one he has achieved is to record, biometrically record all the security service providers the soldiers, the police, the, uh, those who work undercover, the NISA, all these people are in a system that is authentic. And these people are paid minimum salary of $600 per month. If you compare the, the salary of these security servicemen and women to other African countries, there are very few countries that are paying their servicemen and women $600 per month. Farmajo has managed to do that. And this has double benefit. Number one, attract very professional people to join the industry. Number two, taking hand out, discouraging the mentality that encourages taking hand outs. So that means the level of corruption in that industry is minimal. So that is an advantage. That is a step forward for for these people number two is he has reduced wastage of government resources no foreign travel unless it is absolutely necessary if you have to travel to another country there must be compelling reason why you should travel the expanded cabinet has been reduced drastically to a very small and effective team. Now, these two, the fight, you know, to, 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 to get rid of Al-Shabaab is pending. That one has not, nothing much has happened in that front. But priorities he has taken, the priorities he has taken have been productive so far majority of somalis in and out of somalia admire the kind of leadership mohammed abdullahi farmajo has provided that is something that if you ask any somali person they will tell you despite there are some you know few people who are against him majority will tell you the guy has done very good work Mohammed abdullahi farmajo that is not a good communicator what i mean by a good communicator is he doesn't talk a lot he doesn't outline the policies he's not media friendly doesn't talk a lot but his actions speak louder than words for sure that is something that has been seen if you are a person who follows the politics of somalia you will see that 
the way he runs the government, he runs the government effectively with little mention of corruption, uh, lack of lack of ability to govern milestones achieved was only possible because of his leadership style what are his leadership style he's someone who has surrounded himself with a team that are selected on merit if you are effective in your job in the kind of job you do you got you come closer to him his leadership style has been transformational he has the vision of a country that can excel in providing services to its citizens as well as creating an atmosphere where businesses thrive formato is not going anywhere the way i see it very soon if it is either going to be if you are following the the, the, the politics of somalia you will know that there are two choices extension of two years for him or election to be conducted according to the agreement reached by um, regional um, presidents on September 17th last year, 2020. So the guy is not going anywhere very soon. If he is given another four years, as I have mentioned earlier, Somalia will be a different country than it was four years ago. If it is your first time you're coming across this channel, please hit subscribe and turn on notification. Our next person of interest is Abi Ahmed of Ethiopia, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Keep it here, watch it, and let me know what you think. Thank you. See you later.